I paid a grand total of £180 for six faulty Xbox One original consoles. I think that equals about $240. The aim is to fix as many as we can, hopefully it's six out of six, and turn that into a little bit of a profit. I'm a big noob, let's see how many we can fix. If I can fix one, that'll be wicked. Let's go. Let's get started with our first Xbox of the day. We try and put the power in, try and turn it on, and we get absolutely nada, nothing. Console has definitely been opened before and not put back correctly, so we're gonna just get straight into this one. This is the first one, so good luck on this one. We'll path us good luck for the rest. Let's do it. Other than being just ridiculously dusty, as you can see, the front ribbon cable wasn't actually connected to the panel to be able to turn the console on, so I'm just gonna get rid of some of this dust and put the power cable in so we can test it. With that now plugged in, let's see if it powers on. It does, and we also get the LED at the front as well. <coughs> the fan spinners just blow dust everywhere. <coughs> as far as I can see, nothing's coming up on the screen. It's been a good couple of minutes that the machine's been on, but we don't get any display. Let's start with a simple fix of just changing the hard drive and see if that makes a difference. Oh, speaking of that, it's just come on. Just took a very, very, very long time to boot. So after a while, we seem to have the E200 error. I'm gonna plug OSU1 in and see if that fixes it. Okay, OSU1 seems to be working its magic. For those who don't know what OSU1 is, it's an offline file that basically resets the whole Xbox for the hard drive. If this doesn't work, I will swap out the hard drive and see if we get a different result. So the Xbox is currently stuck on step three out of three, applying 66% and 87% overall over here. To fix this, what I'm gonna do is power down the Xbox, Hold down the eject button, the sync button, and the power button, and I think that's gonna restart it again, but should get past this stage. Here I'm using a program called Crystal Disk Info 8.13. This has been recommended by the coder, and as you can see, this is the disk that I've put in, and it says health status, Caution. This is the Xbox. It just sat on that percentage, 66%, and wasn't going up at all. This little hard drive has had 37,158 times it's been on, and the amount of hours equivalates to one year, 326 days. So I think it's safe to say that this hard drive needs to be swapped out. And there we go, that update seems to have worked. I've just put a disc in and it's recognizing the disc, which is good, it's just a DVD. I will test this a little bit more, but I don't wanna bore you, so I'm gonna skip past that stage. What I do need to do though, is reapply some thermal paste. This was underneath the heat sink. As you can see, thermal paste is very, very dry. We have a couple of dust bunnies. And then here is where the non-existent thermal paste is. And we have some more dust bunnies here. Now to add the totally incorrect amount of thermal pasta, this one I consider working. You can see on the screen that it's at 35%, 36%. I connected it to the internet. It's just got a minor update to do. That's a fix. Let's move on to the next console. Here we have Xbox number two, and I believe it's the same issue, no power. So power in, nothing at all. Power brick went from orange to white to orange again. Let's open it up and take a look. Well, I'll tell you one thing. This seems a lot cleaner than the last one. But let me tell you that the cleaner ones seem to have more issues than the really dirty ones. There is a little cobweb. One of these days, a tarantula is gonna jump out of one of these consoles. Today is not that day. We seem to have another one where the ribbon, again, just wasn't connected. So I'm gonna hook it up and try it. All of these consoles were purchased on eBay separately and none of the listings really specified anything. Here we go. It turns on. We have the light down here as well, which is good. Do we get anything pop up on the screen? Yes, we do. Wicked. That was a lot quicker than the other one as well. This gives me hope. Let's see if it reads a disc. Shows up fine here. Yeah, comes up on the uh, on the Blu-ray player. I will test each of these with a proper Xbox One game and just see if it installs and I can play for like maybe 10 minutes on each one just to make sure. But for the time being and for this video, a DVD working is fine. I don't understand. Do people just forget to put the ribbon cable on and then they're like, why doesn't it work? Why doesn't it turn on? I'll give this one a quick service and MOT, but that's another fix for console number two. Let's move on to console number three. Wow, actually turns out this one was really dusty. <laughs> so my service and MOT is the equivalent of a basic clean. Take all this dust off this fan, replace the thermal paste. I'm in for a world of trouble with this console. The case is hanging off. It's got holes in the case, <laughs> as you can see here. Look, I don't know what's happened. The seller sellotaped the screws that came with the console on top of the console, so I've taken them off. I don't feel confident about this one. If we manage to fix it, what I'll do is replace this top with another one that I've got from a donor, because I can't put this back out there with a hole in it. Pretty sure, same story as before. Let's see if we've got power. I think it's a no power. Definitely not gonna turn on, but I'll try. Yeah, not coming on. Let's take it apart. Oh, I just found 
a bigger hole. <laughs> wow, man, what did somebody do to this? I'm gonna gently pull up and I bet the ribbon cable isn't attached. No, it's not. <laughs> the ribbon cable's here, but just not attached. Why? Okay, immediately with this one, we notice that there is a snapped antenna cable. So that will need replacing. If that could be the only thing wrong with this console, that would be three out of three amazing wins. Alrighty, does this one turn on? Here we go. Oh, there's the chime, there we go. Eventually it's come on. The LED, I don't know why I keep showing you that. That disc drive does not sound healthy. LEDs come on down at the bottom. And yes, we get something on the screen. Wicked. Ah, it's just turned off, interesting. We get the Xbox screen, that is not the right resolution to start with. You can see the black bars at the top and the bottom. Do we get a boot to dashboard? Yes, we do. EA Sports UFC 3. 1080p. Maybe it booted into safe mode before because I don't know what they ended up doing to this machine. I want to inspect this one a bit further and we obviously need to sort out the Wi-Fi antenna card. I'm just looking at the top of the Xbox and this is the antenna wire that we have that's broken. If I flip it over, because this is like stuck almost, if I flip it over, we have two pull tabs. So if I just pry these up, all I need to do is then push that through, right? Yeah, there we go. Oh, we have the same up here as well. Nice, there's the wire. Again, another little bit of service in MOT, fresh thermal pasta. Oosh. Spotted another issue with this one. Not a big one, but relative, I think. The hard drive cavity doesn't have any legs to go through the board, so that's gonna rattle around when it's on. And it's also the same story for the disk drive. The disk drive was poking out halfway at the start anyway. But if I show you the little legs, look. So these, these bits here are meant to have little bits poking through so it can stabilize on the board in these holes. So I've just taken some parts from a donor just to make sure that we don't have any loud noises when this Xbox is running. Obviously they serve no purpose, so we're gonna bin that. I'm just gonna take the donor board one, slot that back in place, and just like that, now it's solid. So hopefully it will make less of a rattling noise when it's on. It's the little things that count. And we're gonna do the same for the hard drive. Now there was an issue with this disk drive sounding horrendous when we power this up. So let's just double check and see if that's still happening. Turn it on. How's the disk drive sound? There we go, you hear that? Like that doesn't sound healthy, right? We're just gonna take a quick look at the disk drive and see what could potentially be causing that noise, if it's anything obvious. If it's not, again, I do have a swap out, but I'd rather try and fix it than just swap out, you know? A little bit of dust on the uh, on the old ribbon cable here. And again, just overall dusty, but I can't see anything that jumps out at me straight off the bat. For something as delicate as this, I do have my little air generator, we're gonna call it, just to get any dust out. It's perfect for this. Can of air is also a good option. I'm gonna take this little board out here and see if there's anything evident underneath. I think the two main culprits are either gonna be the rollers, which I don't think it's gonna be the rollers, or it might be the gears down here. Now, because I don't wanna mess around with gears because I'm completely inexperienced, but to other people, they might be really simple. I'm just gonna clean off the rollers and I've given it a good clean as well, just to see that works. For this, I'm gonna squirt some IPA on my cotton bud, pre-installed IPA. How are you sounding, Captain? That was a really bad accent, I'm sorry. Turn the Xbox on. Still getting that noise. There it goes again. It's only when you turn the board off and on, it doesn't sound healthy. Because that noise is still there and I'm not gonna be able to sell this on with that noise, I'm gonna swap the daughter board from what's inside here into another disk drive that I have. This does involve a little bit of soldering and I'll show you that now. Take this board out. This is the disk drive we're going to be using. And then we get this board. Put it in. I'm gonna use a tiny, tiny bit of flux. Could definitely get away without using it, but flux for everything. And then just put the screws back in and we'll test. Do we still get the funky disc noise? Let's find out. I don't think so. I think we're all good. I didn't hear anything. That's a result. Moment of truth, let's see if it takes a disc and displays it. That's good. Because I don't actually know if this disk drive works. <laughs> there we go, Blu-ray. Lovely. Let's just sort out the antenna real quick. Instead of removing the wire from this, I've just decided that I'm gonna swap the whole silver part anyway. But I'm gonna use the same antenna. I wanna make sure the Wi-Fi works on this, just in case the front panel was damaged from where it had ripped the connector. Okay, result, there we go. Yeah, it says start update, we're online. That is Xbox One number three fixed successfully. Moving on to number four. I'm sure we have the same sort of deal here. So the power is in, does it turn on? It does, oh wait a minute, it does power on, I'm very shocked. I thought it was no power. Do we get a display as a question? Yes, we do. <gasps> oh yes, we have a disc. 
Rainbow Six Siege, get in! Hopefully we get a boot to the Xbox home screen. And there we have it, it has. I reckon this one, they maybe had a dodgy power supply, so they've, list they've listed it as faulty, saying that it doesn't turn on, but lo and behold, it's fine. The fan is making a little bit of a noise, so again, I'd like to give it a good thorough clean. All right, so I don't actually think the wireless is working on this console. I'm pressing X, and as you can see, it's not allowing me to actually set up a wireless network. So it just gives me the choice to enter an SSID. So I'm gonna take it apart and have a look at the state of the Wi-Fi card. Ah, oh, okay, so if we have a look here, look, bonsoir mon ami, the connector isn't actually attached fully. It's only attached a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is disconnect it. The, the center of it looks fine. So I'm just gonna put it back down and see if, uh, see if it was just a little bit loose. Let's try now. All right, that hasn't worked. It's still coming up saying add wireless network. I've just swapped out the Wi-Fi card to see if it was the card itself or maybe something to do with the actual board. Turns out it was the Wi-Fi card. I can't show you because otherwise it's just gonna give away all SSIDs that I have on here. But trust me when I say it's working. I could spend time identifying to see if there's any caps that have shorted potentially on this, but this one's working. So the only replacements and stuff I'd have is I'd have to take stuff from a working one and put it on this one. And then I'd just have a non-working one anyway. So there's not really much point to that. Now this one actually has a bit of a surprise for us. I'm gonna take it under the scope and have a look and see what this liquid is. So this is the area that I was just showing you. And we seem to have some sort of sticky residue around this whole area. I can't get it off with IPA, I have tried. So what I think we're gonna have to do is just heat the area up, try and get what's here melted and then clean it away. I might have to end up reflowing some of these chips as well, because as you can see here, this is where it's probably hit the worst. If I don't clean this up, what's gonna happen is just gonna corrode everything and eventually it's gonna break the Xbox. So I'm gonna give this some heat. I'm gonna go with 450 degrees at 50% airflow. It's not immaculate, but it looks 10 times better than what it did, which I'm happy about. This bit of RAM was definitely hit worst as well, so what I'm gonna do is exactly the same, just reflow this really, really quickly. I just wanted to nudge it enough so that it went out of place and went quickly back into place, if that makes sense. I've come to a decision with this board, and whilst I'm happy that we managed to clean up this sort of area, it's still not clean. I mean, this here is some sort of liquid that is clearly come through the fan and is just stuck to the board. It is everywhere. It goes across here. It then goes all the way up the power rail. Look at this. Everywhere. This isn't dust. This is some liquid. I mean, it's all over here as well. Loads of the RAM. Power management IC, I think, which is this chip. Again, it's everywhere around it. Not only there, but also even up here where the ports are. I mean, look at this, just horrendous. The whole the whole thing is just sticky. It's fixed in the sense that yes, we, we managed to get the Wi-Fi working. However, at the same time, it's not, in my opinion, presentable enough in any way, shape or form to sell on. So whilst we can deem this as fixed, it won't be for profit. Moving on to Xbox number five, I've plugged the power in. Do we have power? Yes. We do, result. This one's actually in really good condition as well. It also connects to the desktop and looks absolutely fine. It is signed in, so I've blanked out the information, but it looks good. First things first, let's check and see if it has a disc. <laughs> oh, result, two for two, look at that. Well, okay, two out of six. Tom Clancy's The Division. So does it read the disc if I put the disc back in? Doesn't seem like it wants to read the disc. Before we speculate, I'll try a different disc. Another Tom Clancy game, Rainbow Six Siege. The disc drive is making very weird noises. Definitely no disc being recognized. Wicked. So it's connected to the internet and it says that I need to update 4.4 gig. Let's turn the console off and inspect the disc drive. I think by the time this video is released, I would have hit 4,000 subscribers. Thank you to everyone who subscribed to the channel. I also treated myself to a bit of channel art, so hopefully you enjoy that as well. I joked, I don't know if it was on the last console, the console before, about finding a tarantula in a console. I'm pretty sure that's spider eggs. It's a web wrapped, and then there's something in the middle. Looks like it's about to be born. I've just cleaned out the Xbox, but let's take a look inside this dish tray. I've taken the laser out of the dish tray, and I've also given everything a little bit of a clean with some IPA and my trusty old air provider thing. The disc goes in and out of this fine, but it's just not reading or showing up on the Xbox dashboard. That, to me, sounds like more of a laser issue, which is this little puppy right here. 
I'm also going to give this a clean with some IPA. Just giving the ribbon cables a bit of a clean as well, just in case the contacts on here are a little bit dirty underneath, just on this side here. So everything's been cleaned. Let's put it back together, see if it works. Unfortunately, we have the exact same error that the disc just doesn't come up on the screen. In that case, I'm going to replace the drive. Do the exact same as last time, take the board from this one, swap it out and put it into a new one. Okay, all good so far. I can't hear any noise. I'm just about to put a disc in and see if it works or not. This one was from quite a dusty Xbox as well, so my hopes aren't that high to be honest. All right, does not sound healthy. I can confirm that nothing has come up on the screen. Let me try another disk drive. Second time lucky, new disk drive. Let's go, here we go. Tom Clancy's The Division. Sounds good. Spinning up, nice and healthily. Does it show on the screen? It's showing, there we go, okay. Tom Clancy's The Division, it recognizes it and it's installing it. Xbox number five. Is fixed. So far I technically have four out of five Xboxes at work. Can we make that five out of six with Xbox number six? Wish me luck. Xbox number six, do you give us power? No, nothing at all. No power on this one. Let's open it up. Whilst taking this apart, I've seen that there is a liquid, some sort of liquid. I don't know what it is, but that's not good. Here we have the bare board and I've already done some quick testing just to see if I could rule out anything obvious. So I've got the meter in continuity mode and I'm putting the black probe on ground and the red probe on number six of where the power block goes into. And this isn't coming up as a short. So we know that the 12 volt line is fine. I did then put the meter into diode mode and just check down at the power rail, which is down here on all of the MOSFETs and they all check out as 0.6 volts, which is fine. Then I put the multimeter into voltage mode to see what voltages we have on the board. First off, I can see that we've got 1.8 volts. I see that we've got 3.3. I also see up here that we've got the five volt line as well. And as you can see, we've also also got 1.1. What I have noticed is that on the, I don't know if they're fuses or whether they're resistors, so I do apologize. It's these components right here. On that component, I'm supposed to be drawing five volts and there's multiple of those across the board. However, I'm getting millivolt when I measure either side of that component or any other component for that matter that is very similar around the board where I'm meant to be drawing five volts. I'm getting nothing pretty much. This little component up here has a C on it, a letter C, and that is also meant to be drawing five volts. But as you can see from the multimeter that we've got on the left, 20 watt, 24 millivolts. And when we measure these little components up here, we're also meant to be getting five volts, but we don't. But we have five volts on the test point. Very confused. Only bit of progress that I've got is I've got a power supply unit, right? So the input has been set to five volts and five amps. If I go to these little fuses up here, again, I don't know if these are fuses or resistors, but if I inject five volts here, I get 170 milliamps draw at five volts, which is not gonna really tell me if anything is getting massively hot on the board. However, when I go to this component over here in the top right, which I believe is a little transistor, and I inject the voltage, the voltage goes down to 1.63 and it draws a full five amps. Now, after speaking to Chris from iFix Consoles, top bloke, by the way, always helps me out when I have a bit of an issue. I'll put a card in the top right with his channel. He stated that if the short is a direct connection to the ground plane of the whole board, therefore I'm not gonna be able to see what component is getting hot essentially because it's going to the ground plane on the board. However, I just have, as I'm speaking, I've just felt the board get very hot. I think I found it. I think I found it because my hand is burning. Let me get the microscope and we'll have a look under there and see if it dissolves IPA. There we go. That's going, right? That's dissolving. Yeah, that's definitely dissolving. Look at that. 100%. It doesn't even want to stay on. Yeah, we get the bubbling effect and then it disappears. Let me see if it's hot now. Yes, yeah, boiling. Well, that component I don't think should be getting hot, but it is, it's getting boiling. I think first off, let's just get this component off. So quick observation, when I inject that voltage again, I only get 0.6 amps, so 600 milliamps drawing now, instead of the five amps, that we had. That could be a good sign. Now I need to scour the rest of my Xboxes to see if I can find this exact chip. I found the replacement. We're gonna go 450 degrees Celsius, 50% airflow. Make sure we give it a good clean tidy up. So I've double checked the soldering around this component. And I'm just gonna inject five volts again at the same place I did before and watch. It's just boiling hot again. Could cook an egg on that. I've checked everything around it. 
and it just seems to be this chip that's getting hot. I think I'm gonna have to call it on this one, which is a bit of a shame because I really thought changing out that component would fix it, but unfortunately not. We give it a good shot though. If I manage to sell all of the Xbox Ones for 60 pounds each, which I think is the least I will get for each console, for the four I fixed, I'd get 240 pounds. For all six of the consoles, I paid 180 pounds. So this therefore gives me a profit of around about 60 pounds or $90. Hope you enjoyed, see you in the next one. Peace.